Hello and welcome to this video on tariffs and trade. So in this video we're going to look at the impact of a tariff on a domestic market and be able to illustrate the tariff diagram which is one of the best diagrams in economics. We're going to go through the theory together and I would suggest holding off on drawing your diagram until we've completed the story and I will tell you at that point which diagram to copy down into your notes. So a quick reminder, tariff is a tax or a duty that raises the price of imported products, sometimes referred as a customs duty. So we're going to consider the impact of the introduction of a tariff on our domestic market. So here is our domestic market for steel. So we have the price of steel on this axis, the quantity of steel. And in our small domestic market, we have the demand for steel and we have the supply of steel from our domestic companies, coming from our domestic companies within our country. And so currently we have a price of steel of P1 and a quantity being bought and sold in our market of Q1. So people within our country are buying Q1 of steel and the companies, the steel producing companies within our market are selling Q1 of steel at a price P1. So what we're going to do is we're now going to allow free trade. We're now going to allow imports to come into our market. And we're going to assume that the price of imported goods is somewhere below uh, our market price. So the price of imported goods might be somewhere down here, the, the current world price. And the second assumption we're going to make is that at the current world price, there is a lot of steel. And so regardless of how much we import, we're going to be doing so at the same price. So we're going to almost have an international supply curve to go along with our uh, domestic supply curve as well. And this international supply curve is horizontal because we're making the assumption here that these international steel companies will supply our market, whatever the quantity at the current world price. So here comes the world supply of steel. This is our separate, a second supply curve on our diagram here, which represents the supply curve of the international suppliers. And they will provide any quantity of steel at a price PW. So what impact does that have on the market? Well, our domestic companies cannot really compete with this new price P world. So the amount that domestic suppliers can produce at this price, at the new price of PW, is only Q2. When I go along the domestic supply curve, this is where I get to. I go down the supply curve until PW, and I see that domestic suppliers will now pr produce Q2 only of uh, steel. They can only compete with that much at that price. Only those suppliers can compete. How much is going to be bought domestically now? How much are people going to buy steel? Well, I go down the demand curve until I get to PW and I find out that it would be this quantity of uh, steel that is consumed by domestic, uh, domestic consumers. At this lower price, not surprising, people are now buying more steel. So Q3 is what people are buying and Q2 is being provided by the domestic companies. So the gap must be the quantity of imported steel. So what we can see at the moment, we started off with our market at P1, Q1. We then opened ourselves up to P trade, uh, sorry, to, to world free trade. And our market was flooded with cheap imported steel at price PW. This was great for consumers. Consumers could now consume Q3. And if we look carefully, we can see what's happened to consumer surplus. Originally, the consumer surplus would have been this triangle here, but it has grown quite dramatically and is now represented by this green triangle here. So we've seen a huge increase in consumer surplus, which you know figures because they can now buy a lot more steel at a lower price. But let's also think about what's happened to our domestic companies. They've seen the price that they can charge fall from P1 to PW. This has contracted the amount that they're selling down to Q2. So what's happened to domestic companies producer surplus? What originally produced a surplus was this, the area below the market price. 
But now following the opening up of this market to free trade, we can see that producer surplus has shrunk and only the most efficient domestic consumers, uh, sorry, domestic producers are left in the market. So this is a really good diagram to demonstrate the impact, the benefits of free trade. We can see a huge increase in consumer surplus, but a reduction in producer surplus. But often supplies are particularly noisy when less is being supplied domestically and people start losing their jobs. They start to protest to the government and so the government think, right, we need to restrict the level of imports. So what do we do? Well, we introduce a tariff and the tariff is raising the price of the imported goods from PW up to PW plus whatever the tariff is. Remember, it doesn't affect the domestic companies at all. It really only applies to the international suppliers and it's increased the price at which they can sell into our market. So what will be the impact of this? So what will be the impact of this? Well, first of all, at this higher price, we can see there's a reduction in demand from steel. So the quantity being consumed in total falls from Q3 to Q4. On the flip side, we can also see that at this new higher price, that more of the domestic companies become competitive. And we see the domestic companies increase how much steel they're selling from Q2 to Q5. So the imports have now reduced to Q4 minus Q5, or the gap between Q4 and Q5. What's been the impact of this in terms of welfare within our economy? Well, the first thing to note is that the government generates significant tax revenue. We can see that the value of the tariff is the gap between the two supply curves. That's the value of the tax. And it applies to all the imported goods. So the gap between Q4 and Q5. So it applies to all of these imported products. So if we multiply the tariff by the number of imports, we would be able to calculate the government revenue from the imported tariff. Secondly, we can see that consumer surplus after the tariff has shrunk. It's actually shrunk by quite a lot, it's shrunk by this red area I'm badly outlining here, and there's now only the blue triangle. So we've seen a big reduction in consumer surplus. And the question might be, well, where has this consumer surplus gone? Has someone else managed to benefit as a result? Well, we can see that domestic producers are benefiting. Their producer surplus has increased by this green area. But the smart ones amongst you might say, well, okay, well, consumer surplus has gone down. Some of that has gone to the government in terms of tax revenue. Some of it's gone to the domestic producers in terms of increased domestic producer surplus. But what's happened to these two areas here of lost consumer surplus? Well, the answer is that these losses in consumer surplus are not offset, are not gained by anybody else. So these are deadweight losses or net welfare losses arising from the introduction of the tariff. And this is why as economists we would always argue against the introductions of tariffs because the negative effect on consumers is not offset by the gains to the government and the producers. There are these areas of lost consumer surplus here that are not gained by anybody else and so there is a net, fair, net welfare loss to society. So this is our final diagram and this is the one I would suggest that you uh, take down in your notes. And I would always suggest labeling it because it can get very confusing when you're trying to color things in and obviously in the exam you can't use different colors. So I would draw a diagram like this and label the key points. So this is a really excellent diagram because it shows us lots. We can talk about the benefits of free trade, the, in, the introduction, the increase in consumer surplus. Um, we can also talk about the way in which only the most efficient domestic suppliers can survive in a market flooded by cheap imports. But then when we introduce a tariff, we can also look at the impact. We see, as noted on the right hand side here, the fall in imports from Q3 minus Q2 to Q4 minus Q5. We also see that there is an increase in domestic producer surplus following the increase of the tariff by the area PW plus tariff B to A to PW. 
We also see the government benefits through tax revenue of the area B, E, D, C. But finally, importantly, we see that consumer surplus decreases by the biggest area, PW plus tariff, E, F, P, W. And this gives rise to two areas of net welfare loss, the area A, B, C and the area D, E, F. So here's a table that explains some of the consequences of import of, of introducing a tariff. We see that in terms of domestic output, there is an expansion. In terms of domestic demand, though, there is a contraction. We see a fall in the volume of imports, an increase in government tax revenues, and an increase in domestic producer surplus and domestic producer revenues. However, we see a fall in revenue for the foreign producers and a fall in consumer surplus. So overall, in terms of economic welfare, there is a fall, there is a net welfare loss or a deadweight loss to society. So let's evaluate and analyze this and evaluate it in a bit more detail. Look at the impact on domestic producers. So initially they benefit from the tariff, they're protected from the lower priced imports and can expect an increase in, in outputs to increase their revenues and their operating profits. But this might lead to possible X inefficiency because of the lack of competition. There's no incentive for our firms to become uh, efficient. It can also raise the cost for other companies within the marketplace. For example, if we put a tariff on steel, it's going to raise the cost of a car. Let's have a look at the impact on foreign producers. Well, the impact tariff is a barrier to trade, squeezes demand, leads to lower revenues and profits for them. But producers may be able to shift production or exports to countries where import tariffs are lower, or maybe they could open up production within a trade block so that tariffs cannot be applied in the first place. For consumers, this is really bad. They face higher prices, leading to a fall in real incomes. Again, this is particularly regressive. Those lower income households will pay a greater proportion of their earnings on products that have tariffs in place. It might also lead to a loss of consumer choice. Although the impact depends again on the price elasticity of demand for the product. Tariffs on essential items such as foodstuffs tend to have a lower price elasticity of demand. And we might see much, we might not see much of a reduction in the demand for these products. From the government's perspective, well, they have protected jobs, they have generated tax revenues. However, there may be the negative effect in the long term of retaliatory measures, retaliatory measures by other governments. We also increase the risk, perhaps, of slower economic growth, uh, more cost push inflation, and obviously there's been the impact on consumers. So just to summarise, tariffs. As economists, we would normally argue against the introduction of tariffs. Maybe as politicians, we might argue something else. There's a potential for Retaliation, so really a loss of efficiency, higher prices for domestic consumers, particularly those on low incomes, it's important, increased costs, uh, potential for corruption. And so there's a widely held view in economics that tariffs are a negative thing because they lead to loss of welfare within society. So in this video, we've looked at the impact of a tariff and we should be able to illustrate the impact of a tariff using a tariff diagram. That's it. Thanks very much for listening.